This is Matt, and this is a story about how he came to my shop and messed everything up. Actually, Matt joined us for a week-long apprenticeship-style experience, and we worked so well together that the table we were building was finished two days ahead of time. Teamwork makes the dream work. So with two days to kill, I scrambled to find a small project that we might be able to do together. And I remember that a friend of mine recently requested a Lazy Susan. That would be perfect. I mean, how hard could it possibly be? It's just a couple of circles. Well, it turned out to be harder than I thought. What you're going to see here today is an example of how even the simplest project can be sabotaged with poor planning and a lack of preparation. Admittedly, I was more concerned about Matt having a good experience in the shop and the details of the project just kind of became secondary. In the end, we paid for it with a comedy of errors. To make the two circles, I glued up some walnut. The top would be some lightly figured stuff and the bottom would be a little bit more pedestrian as it won't be seen as much. To cut out the top circle, I made a little trammel arm from some scrap plywood. I used my trim router for this, but realized afterwards that I would have been much better off with my full-size router. Come in, child. That's some creepy sh Not just because of the additional power and dust collection, but because of the smooth plunge action. Each height adjustment causes the little router to move a bit, and that can lead to unsightly divots around the edge. You really want to make sure that you have double stick tape on the outer perimeter as well as the interior circle itself. Once they're separated, you don't want them going anywhere. Now I'll use the tram alarm setup again with a different setting to cut a circle template that'll be used to create the recess in the top piece. And this was error number one. The diameter wasn't correct, so I grabbed some MDF and tried again. Mistake number two was not putting centered crosshairs on everything. When aligning circle components, having crosshair lines can help you get things perfectly concentric, and without them, you have to do dumb things like this to make sure you're centered. To route the inner recess, I'm going to use one of these big bearing guided bulb bits and my router sled. This sled was designed for flattening larger pieces, but should work just fine as is. You see, the circle template will only allow the router support around the edge. It won't help us clean out the middle, so the sled works like a charm, but it is messy work. That's deeper than I realized. That's what she said. Oh my God, what did I say? Mistake number three. The hole that I drilled for the tram alarm was supposed to be on the underside, not on the top face. So I'm weighing my options here. I could either route deeper or simply patch it. Looks like we're gonna try to patch it and route deeper. All right, here we go. Yo. Let's have some fun. I'm gonna have me some fun. I'm gonna have me some fun. At this point, I'm starting to get a little bit stressed out because I can see the wheels on our cart beginning to lift off the rails. Plus, every few seconds, Matt would get his nozzle pinched and it would annoy me. Stop it, Matt. But the good news is we seem to clear the hole and the surface looks pretty good. And the saga continues. Now for the bottom. I figure the bottom can be a smaller diameter and I'm using everything I have in the shop, apparently, to try to shape this thing. The Lazy Susan hardware I'm using is a double ring, and I got the bright idea to see if we can recess it into the bottom. That would allow the top and bottom to nest together, giving the top a little bit more of a floating appearance. But as I started routing, I realized that my bit moved on me and my bearing wasn't contacting the template. So I gave it a nice new shape that is distinctly no longer a circle. Mistake number four. Thankfully, this whole recess thing is never going to be seen, so I soldier on. I'm gonna have me some fun. I'm gonna have me some fun. At this point, Matt had to return to his regular life, and I decided to finish the walnut version off camera. Now, as I told Matt when we were working together, I have a specific policy regarding mistakes. One mistake, no big deal. Two mistakes, I start thinking about what's going on with my headspace and why are these mistakes happening. And by the time I make my third mistake, that's usually when I turn off the lights, shut everything down, and I go home for the day because the next mistake could very well be something that's a safety issue, right? So generally three strike rule. And even though we hit that point, I had a guest in the shop. I couldn't just say, hey, let's just go home because we made mistakes. We had to see it through. 
So I finished the walnut version of the Lazy Susan off camera and then kind of set up anew with all the things that I had learned in that first experience. And since Nicole had already expressed interest in getting one of these Lazy Susans, I figured, you know what, I'll make her one. We'll film all the details on that one and then we would have a great video for you guys. Or so I thought. Mistake number five. I was using the material that I had on hand and this new mahogany stock was not the same dimension as the walnut, but I figured I could make it work out as I go. This too shall bite me in the ass. Okay, so this time I decided to do the inner recess on the top piece first, which should give me more support for the template overall. And that went according to plan. Something I didn't show on the walnut piece was that I also did a light recess on the underside of the top, which allows the bottom piece to set up inside the top piece. Now on the bottom piece, I'm gonna make the recess for the hardware. With the recesses cut, I can now cut the outer circles for both the top and the bottom. And here's mistake number six. I must have gotten something very wrong with my crosshairs because the outer diameter is definitely not concentric with the inner diameter. God damn it! Thankfully, that's the underside of the top, so we should be able to hide that. I rough cut at the bandsaw and then flush trim at the router table. While at the router table, I applied some lipstick to the pig by adding a nice profile on the edge. All right, time to sand it up. The inside of the surface cleans up pretty easily with a sander, but the details are done by hand. This is my backside, but this is backside sandpaper. It's double-sided sandpaper made right here in the Wood Whisperer shop. Grit on two sides means no folding and no frayed edges. You can get right into those intricate details and when the edge is spent, a quick cut with scissors and you're back in action. These are also great for sanding inside and outside curves as well as complex profiles. Because of the two-sided structure, the paper is also incredibly durable and the grit lasts a long time. So if you wanna check this stuff out, go to BacksideSandpaper.com. Thanks for your support. And now for mistake number seven. You see the sweet Lazy Susan hardware? Apparently it's not intended to be screwed to a surface in spite of having countersunk holes and pictures on the Amazon page showing screws. By screwing it down to a surface, the rings are completely immobilized. So I decided to use some CA glue to attach small washers which will provide the needed clearance for the rings to spin. With the inner ring secured to the bottom, I could then drill some holes through the outer hole locations. These are gonna go all the way through the bottom piece and with a wide enough hole, we'll be able to attach the top by driving some screws through the bottom. The hole should only be large enough for the screw head to clear. So now I'll apply the finish. Just a little hard wax oil should do the trick. Now with the finish applied, I can attach the top. The holes on the bottom really aren't hurting anything, but I decided it would be good to make use of them by attaching some little rubber feet. That should help stabilize the Lazy Susan while helping it grip whatever surface it sits on. All right, so here we are. Both Lazy Susans are finished and they turned out just fine. The finish on the walnut version is armor seal satin, nice and protective, but not a real high sheen. That walnut's looking really, really nice. Uh, on the mahogany, we've got a little bit of Osmo and then I put a ceramic coating on top of that, and that's looking pretty fine. Right? Ultimately, I think I like the walnut version a little bit better. I like the wider rim and the more shallow surface here. Um, the mahogany one is, you know, it just kind of rolling with the punches, and boy, were there a lot of punches right in the face. Now, I'm actually not that familiar with Lazy Susans. These sound loud to me. I don't know, maybe not. I mean, we had a Lazy Susan growing up uh, as a kid. My mom had one and my extent of usage was putting my G.I. Joe guys on there and spinning it really hard to see if I can get them to fly off. Make it so, Mr. LaForge. Oh, he didn't go. And I don't remember how it sounded, so I'm a bit of a noob in this area, but 
I guess with all the ball bearings, there's gonna be noise. Now, I'll be honest, I really considered completely bailing on this project, not the building of the project itself. I knew I can get a functional thing because I was making it for a friend. I had to, if I needed to just restart it, I would have. I was gonna bail on the video. I do love to show my mistakes. I think there's great learning that comes from mistakes, not just for me, but for you guys to watch me make them and see how I address them and fix them. But there is a point when there are so many mistakes that I start to lose the, the whole point of the video. I start to lose the storytelling of how this project is going together because I'm constantly correcting myself or trying to save you guys from making the same mistakes. So I was this close to bailing on this. But then I thought, I'm like, you know what? Sometimes you gotta show people that this is what happens if you don't plan and you just let these mistakes kind of compound and they keep getting worse and worse and you keep making more just because, I, I don't know, it's something weird that happens in the shop. I've, I've only had a few projects that have done this to me where the writing's on the wall and it's time to walk away. And that's one thing that um, we probably should have done. But again, with the apprenticeship style program we were running, I didn't have a choice to just say, hey, let's bail today and go for a bike ride. <laughs> we had no choice. We had to uh, finish this thing. So hopefully you found this interesting watching me flail. And while I jokingly blame Matt, clearly the fault here lies 100% on my shoulders. I mean, this does seem like, yeah, it should be super easy. It's just a couple of circles, but it's really not. It's different outer diameters for both the top and the bottom piece. Then there's an inner diameter for the recesses. And then there's another set of dimensions for the hardware to sit into. And then you have to decide what's going to get a template, what's not. I mean, if you're making a bunch of these, you certainly want to template it all out. But a lot of this can just be done with that tram alarm setup. You don't need the templates necessarily, but deciding how many you're doing and you know the router bits even, right? The distance that the router bit protrudes from the bearing is a huge factor that relates to the thickness of the template you're using, right? You gotta make sure that bearing makes contact and doesn't go too deep in doing so. There's just a lot of things to think about for two silly little circles. So while I certainly don't think I've done a very good job of showing you guys how to make a Lazy Susan, I do think I've done a great job of showing you how not to make one. Humbled by a lazy Susan. Who'd have thought? Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.